is the Glass Cannon Network. Juicy fruit is gonna move ya. The juice is soft, it gets right to ya. A juicy fruit, the taste, the taste, the taste is gonna move ya. Happy New Year, juicy fruit lovers everywhere. Or if you're like Matthew, big red lovers. <laughs> Try to keep pay- Matthew from a pack of big red. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it. Can't do can't it. Can't do it. Big red's fine and all, but have you guys had the? Was it the zebra stripe? Uh, oh, oh, zebra stripe. Fruit stripe, right? Fruit stripe. Fruit stripe. Gum. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. Fruits. Right. Yikes. Stripes. <laughs> the bubble tape. Fruit stripe gum. Bubble tape bubble also tape. good. It wasn't tape. good gum, it was but it was classic. fun. Hubba Bubba with the watermelon Hubba, Bubba, in the sure. middle. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Yep. What about yep. Big League Chew? Big League Chew, man. Oh, okay. That was where it was at. Chew. It promoted some tobacco <laughs> use among <laughs> children. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want in your gum. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who made? Who came up with that? Who started Big League Chew? It was um, a genius. Uh, well, um, I know. Yeah, I mean, I remember. Genius. Yeah, because in the in the eighties, like all the dudes had like Lenny Dykstra cheeks, like huge wad of chew in their mouth, and so little kids were like, "I want to be just like my heroes." So yeah. we'd be sitting there playing little league, taking a wad of watermelon, popping it in there. We didn't know. Uh, yeah, no good, one though. now regrets wanting to have, to be like Lenny Dykstra. <laughs> Uh, it is his name is Rob Nelson and I know him because not personally I know him because of that amazing documentary that I don't know if you've ever watched Skid Uh, I keep telling you to watch it Uh, The Battered Bastards of Baseball on Netflix oh oh, Oh, it's a phenomenal documentary about minor league baseball and this guy who was in on this famous team from Portland in the 70s also happened to invent Big League Chew Uh, he never really made it as a pro player but he played on this minor league team and then he created Big League Chew uh, yeah, I, I loved Big League Chew. It's good stuff. Do you, yeah. you guys big gum chewers these days? I haven't chewed gum in 14 years. I chew gum almost every day. Really? Really? Yeah. yeah. It's because of your overwhelming halitosis. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing I got to say married. something to you. Um, no, I just, uh, I, I keep it in my car and I just use it as like a breath freshener. I, I always have like mint gum, like little mint gums. And I chew them when I'm in the car. And then when I get to wherever I'm going, I just throw them in the trash. Kate, you a uh, you a big gum chewer? No, I don't like when other people chew gum. So I know that I'm gonna do the thing that I hate when I chew the gum. Just like play with it in my mouth and be obnoxious. Mm. So I have Altoids because I'm an oh. adult, mm. Joe. Yes, <laughs> Altoids. I get in the car gum. and I get out my bubble tape. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> my mom thought gum chewing in general was rude. So I we were always I just, I just like I never got in the habit. Like I would chew gum, but like. Mostly, I'm a mince person. You're a mince person. Mm. Yeah, I, I pegged you for a mince person. Skid, uh, I've never Peg seen you. Time. Yeah, I, I don't think if you're a gum chewer, I wouldn't know because you've never offered me a stick. No, I, I used to chew a lot of gum as a kid. I chewed gum all the time. I loved the big gum connoisseur. I love the Trident Fruits uh, flavored gum. That was, oh, sure. That was great. Mm. Every time I see the old uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniforms, I'm reminded of the. The, the same color as the trident fruit flavor gum. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the pirate, the orange, it was the same color. But Going to uh, yeah, not in many years. I don't, <laughs> I don't drink a lot. But I used to take like a big fistful. That's why I like Big League Chew as well, because you take a big fistful of it, just cram it all in your mouth, just get a ton, <laughs> just a blast of flavor, and then spit it out after five seconds. Sydney, as a, as a three-pack-a-day smoker, I imagine you chew a lot of gum. <laughs> I'm not a smoker. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no. most people don't know that. Like, I mean, oh. <laughs> like, 
in the green room before a live show. She's got to take about really? eight smoke breaks, like in an hour <laughs> before the show. It's through. just wild. Yeah, you she know, always, she's always ranting about how you used to be able to smoke in the green room, and now you can't anymore at these <laughs> venues. Weird. Covered so in Joe, patches. Joe sitting time. next to me in Philly. I was like shaking the table because you know, at two hours in, I was like my knees. I was like, I just have to go. Smoke. I have to go. I have to get out of here now. <laughs> uh, no, I I don't smoke. Um, she's but like, I do. She's like packing her mic. Her mic pack. Like, <laughs> I don't smoke. Um, I sometimes carry gum like Joe does, just as like a, a breath freshener. But I I like mints better because I like candy. I don't like gum because it doesn't give me the satisfaction of that candy does. Because you spit gum out, you don't eat the gum. Um, so I'm more often what? to have like I don't know, something <laughs> weird. In what? It. Wait. what? I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> People from New Jersey swallow it whole. It's all starting to make sense now. <laughs> you guys swallow your gum? Yeah. <laughs> if you're in like upstate New York, you're okay <laughs> wasting your gum like that. Some of us. It's like be a, nice. weird, a weird New Jersey fact, like in Parks and Rec, how they put their whole mouth over the water. <laughs> <laughs> like something that only they do in that town. <laughs> Joe is just eating packs of gum, like full packs, just one after another, popping them in, swallowing them. Oh man! Uh, I like to chew on candy. I like like um, I don't know, like juju bees, like really chewy candies that take a while to eat. So I don't know, gum doesn't do it for me. We were probably about a year, two years in to Glass Cannon, and I, I got Invisalign. And so mm. I had Invisalign, I had to leave it on all day long, and I was I probably chewed gum, uh, maybe at, a, at an above average rate for someone my age, uh, and then I couldn't chew gum for the longest time, and now that, that, that I've had Invisalign out for a few years now, I just it kind of broke me of my gum thing. Mm. I will say, Troy, I, I also had Invisalign later in life, like as an adult at 25, I think, mm. and... I am a snacker. You guys know this about me. I've always oh, yeah. been a snacker. And oh my God, it did it curb my snacking for like years. Like I mm -hmm. just couldn't, I could not snack. I couldn't eat throughout the day. You had to like plan three meals a day <sighs> when you were going to take your little retainers out because you had to brush your oh. teeth and rinse with water. Uh, and I totally stopped snacking that whole entire time. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was going to drop like 20 pounds, and I didn't, because during those three times, I would just shove as much food <laughs> in my mouth as possible. All right, you time to my bad habit. Habit. For me, no, I was like, should I get Invisalign even though, for no reason, just for the for the diet purpose? And then I, I realized I would do exactly what Troy just described. <laughs> I will Chocolate say. Chocolate cake, three times uh, a day. And they're not a sponsor, but we should call them up. City, I don't know if you'll agree. Invisalign is like the greatest thing ever. Oh, yeah. It's the greatest. If you're like, yeah. ah, I don't want to get braces. Invisalign's great. I mean, you can see them. You watch early videos of like when we're doing the Twitch, I was doing like intros to the Dark Souls videos. I got the fucking Invisalign in my mouth because I was doing 20 takes. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a little annoying, but it's over like that. And it's amazing how, uh, how much it helped uh, to straighten up some spaces. Yeah, I think most uh, people probably don't notice it. But whenever I go back and I'm listening to an old episode of the GCP for one reason or another, I'll be like, wait a minute. This is an Invisalign time. This, yeah, this took like place Cindy during. Brady. Yeah, you can you can hear well, it. It's, it's, it's a little, little bit of a lisp. Yeah, yeah. it's a slight <laughs> lisp. You also started. I think it. I don't know if it was because of the Invisalign or just coincided with it, but you started like doing this like smacking your lips thing. So well, you literally can see it on the waveform. You're uh, <laughs> take a number like, if you want to talk about my smacking my lips thing. That's a, a big bone of contention. What people don't realize is the reason you hear it so much is because my audio is the audio that is sampled, my room tones. That's why you're hearing old smacky McLips. <laughs> You just like hanging out, leaning literally yeah. your weight on the microphone, <laughs> and then you smack your lips. That's kind of the issue. It's lip, lip smack. He wouldn't be so bad if it was back here. So you Every like time I smack, I'll take it. a step back. <laughs> take a take sniff. A step pull it out. The taste is gonna move you when you pop it in your mouth. Those, those songs were very sexual, and I watch. I ha it's been like an earworm all day. So I watched like the old '80s commercials, and it's just like women taking their clothes off, and the songs are like, "Take a sniff, pull it out. The taste is gonna move you. <laughs> pop it in your mouth." <laughs> is that a cigar you're gesturing that. with? This, uh, no, uh, friend of the show, uh, Carrie Haley, uh, upon visiting. I don't know if, uh, with our first time in Portland, uh, one of the many things I made fun of uh, in that silly little town is that you can't get a straw in any uh, restaurants. They don't, oh. they don't give out straws, because that, that's what they're uh, marching to. Um, but 
<laughs> she gave me this like portable straw. It's like a metal straw. So next time I visit Portland, I can use yeah. it. And this is the case that it comes in. Oh. Uh, the straw's That's a around huge here somewhere. Case. My son was playing with it, but I like having a little thing in my hand. <laughs> when you're working the hi hat. It's kind of like a David Letterman thing, like having the pen. It's just, it's the fun having a prop. Pen on the cards. I love my metal straws. I have a bunch of metal straws. Whenever I go to the movie theater, I bring my metal straws. Yeah, I have them too. That's a good idea. Yeah. By the way, Matthew, Joe, I assume you know this, but from watching that documentary, but what the co-creator of Big League Chew was Todd Field. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I knew this. I knew this. I yeah. just had a conversation Field, about this. Todd Field was the bat boy. On that, oh, yeah, that minor yeah. league Portland team. Yeah. Yeah. The guy who directed Tar was the co creator of <laughs> Big, League, of Big Chew. League Chew. As he's, a child. he's had an interesting life. <laughs> he certainly has. Wonderful. Now director. we know where he got his seed money for that. <laughs> <laughs> Big gum. Uh, well, speaking of Big Gum, you guys ended in a sticky situation oh, in Philadelphia. Oh, man. Good one. How, How does he do it? Do it? Good night. Um, <laughs> Man, that Philly show, that's the last time, I, I said it on a Cannon Fodder yesterday, that's the last time that I gamed was that Philly show. It was the last time I, I played a game, and so I have not played in a month. And uh, that time away, I'm, it's, I'm excited. I'm excited to jump back in. Um, but I want to just remind you guys what happened, because I think that you have probably forgot. While you were having a little eggnog, chewing a little gum over the holidays, <laughs> as one does. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> we were in the uh, the mediocre city of Philadelphia at the outstanding city winery venue. How nice was that venue? Amazing. So nice. Amazing. So much fun, too. Such a good show. Oh, yeah. It was a fun time. Uh, we definitely have to go back there next year. It was just like one of the nicest places we ever played. You Tom, think they'll have us? Easy. Yeah, I, think we, I think we left the place the way we found it. I don't you know, think there we are said anything so many, that. So many of these venues, they come out to us after the show, and the people are like, that that was awesome. Like we never see shows like that. That was, that was really neat. I really liked that. That was fun. Nobody said that at Cine Wine. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I don't know. Most, I don't know if we'll be invited back. <laughs> there was one woman, if you guys remember, who worked yes. there, oh, who yeah. wasn't working the event, who mm -hmm. came up to us and she knew about D and D. Used to play back in the day with a group. She was like an only female player and was like an early player of D and D and was so excited about the show and wanted to call her girlfriend who she knew and knows people in the industry. And she was like, I wish I knew that you guys were here tonight. Uh, we would have come to the show. Uh, so she was very excited. So one person at no. City Winery wants Doesn't us count. I, I also That was pre-show. The, the <laughs> right. She didn't one say the, anything post-show. <laughs> <laughs> one of the bartenders had like a chain mail container full of dice. Oh. I like saw oh. it on his person and I was like, hey, what is that thing? It looks cool, an accessory pouch. And he takes it off and he poured it on the counter. It was dice. So I think that maybe they weren't that surprised that it was so cool because they know that they're like, already gamers. gamers yeah, that's yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. So. Maybe yeah. they were mad because Kate drank all their wine. <laughs> <laughs> she really that's did get really after the more. wine. She likes wine. that Syrah. You guys can't be mean to Kate. She needs or her drinking. Syrah. Oh, wine hi. goes bad if you leave it open. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's a good when point, Kate. Roll. The wine is for drinking. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're not supposed to just look at it. We were That's at the city wine chew gum as an adult, and then some people drink wine. True. <laughs> Wait, no. Wine wine only becomes alcoholic if you leave it open. You <laughs> I drink it here. right away. There's no alcohol. Oh, I came here to right. chew gum and drink wine, and I'm all out of wine. Because <laughs> Kate drank it. Um, well, at that sesh... Our heroes once again attempted this uh, Dreamlands excursion ritual uh, in search of a, another quote unquote gift uh, that they hope to present to someone named the Mad Poet. Uh, they know that uh, Count Lyles, who they're, who they're going after, traveled to the dimensions of dreams, gathering these gifts to give to the Mad Poet. The Mad Poet then imparted some sort of knowledge to Count Lyles, and now Lyles is down south chasing down a copy of the Necronomicon. So. You guys, our heroes, you're following in Lyle's footsteps, traveling to the dreamlands, looking for the same gifts that he found to give to the mad poet so you can speak to him and find out what Lyle's is up to. So this time, after enacting this ritual again in search of a captain's tricorn hat, you woke up back on the boat. And you're like, what, did we fail the ritual? 
you feel like you lost some time somehow because you don't have any memory of traveling there, but there you are, just waking up on the boat. You don't know what's going on. So you go, go up on the deck, and while everything looks normal, everything seems a bit off. People are acting a little weird. Things, something looks different, but you can't put your finger on it. You go to the stern, and Skywind, your captain, is standing there just staring like she can hear something or see something. Uh, Pedro Alakabam, uh, son of Steve Alakabam, nay, Magic Alakabam, uh, is is struggling to catch fish. Um, but you look in the water and you see all of these bioluminescent fish flying around, you, uh, floating around. You look and you see these like elephant-like creatures on the shore. You do a, a nature check and you realize that they're not native to the Verduran forest. Something is wrong. And then at that moment, two things happen. You see, emerging from the fog behind you, this ship with blood red sails emerge. This is a ship that you know has been hunting you and now it's quickly moving toward your boat. Uh, and then the second thing that happened is, is it's Skywind's head snaps back, her clothes fall to the ground and she sprouts claws and fangs and turns into this hideous beast and goes after you. You fight her and she Fs you up. But when you defeat the false Skywind, you have just a moment to heal and buff before the blood wind slides alongside you full of treacherous looking scallywags. As it slides alongside you, you all hear this low, dark laugh, almost as if it was coming from the boat itself. <laughs> it has these two blood-drenched sails, and they're like fluttering in the breeze, fluttering in the breeze, and they part, and two figures emerge. There's a dark, spectral-looking woman with long claws, and there's a man with an alien-like visage. It's slightly out of focus. And he addresses you and lets you know that the Dracolus that killed Sir Julie, that killed Ave Maria, and almost killed all of you, was sent by him. And now he's here with his crew to finish the job. And atop of he his head, of course, is a captain's tricorn hat. They disappear back into the folds of these drenched sails. And eight crew members stand ready to attack, board your boat, mess you up. First of the year, let's roll for initiative. Okay. Oh, oh we get Whoa. a new Anish, John? All right. New Anish, John. I like to start a year with a fresh Anish. Call me old fashioned, but I like a fresh Anish. It's one of my resolutions. <laughs> perception, I, I'm imagining, is gonna be our best bet here. Yeah, perception. Perception would be great, you're, you're looking. How fast can you look? Um, Aldo, what'd you get? Uh, 30. 30 for Aldo. Eris. I got a natural 19, so that's a 40. What? <laughs> Damn. Att Atticus Grimm? 40? Wow. Yeah, I got a natural 19, I have 11 <laughs> perception. That's a 30. That's 40, right? That would be a 30. 30. So. <laughs> You looked at us. You looked back at us like you didn't believe us. Did you hit the sewer like, early today there, Kate? I kind of like I'm, double like the 40. with coffee and seltzer. So. I think Kate should keep the 40, because she was really confident about like, it. She was so confident. So I think she should mentioned. keep the number. 19 uh, plus 11, what's the problem? I'm really, really ready for this game right now. Yes. I don't know about you guys, but I have an 11 initiative. Uh, I rolled garbage and got a 15. Garbage. <laughs> so sad about my role. Bad role to start <laughs> the year. That's okay. Get it out of the way. You've got 52 more out. weeks to fail. Uh, Suki. Uh, 24. Not not great. Not bad. Pretty good, but Should not we a 40. check your math? No, I. the math that Kate had also sounded good to me, but uh, my math is correct. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and what about known mathematician? Matthew, what did Ethel get? 31. 31. You good at math, Matthew? Uh, I'm no, I'm okay. I'm I, I'm out of practice. You know, you can spell math with four of the letters in your name. It's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you I can call him spell. math for short. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if he'd allow it. He prefers that. It's That's my right. funny math. <laughs> Excuse me, Matt. Uh, it's math. <laughs> math. 
<laughs> math. <laughs> and when I'm in England, it's maths. <laughs> maths. I prefer, I prefer math. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to this stupid old map. No, this map is beautiful. Uh, is beautiful. I mean, look at this. This is, again, another Dave M. special. Um, okay, it is going to be my turn to start one of these guys. I love, you guys know that I love when there's 45 uh, NPCs that I have to control. It's just the a best. GM's dream. Uh, so I'll start with uh, <laughs> Scallywag number 42. Uh, he's the one uh, down here towards the uh, the front of the ship here. Would that be uh, 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 port and starboard? Starboard, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. There he is. Um, now here's what I'm gonna do. You see how it's 10 feet between the boat and you? Mm -hmm. That's a mistake on my part. I wanted to have those boats be a little closer. And the reason being, it just makes it easier uh, for a boarding action um, because of the, uh, for both of you, for both you and the and the uh, the NPCs, because you can use the leap action. Uh, if you can move up to, uh, I think it's up to like 20 feet, you can leap 10 feet. And if you have 30 feet of movement, you can leap up to 15 feet. Um, it's just an action. You don't have to roll an athletics check. Um, but it's technically, it would be a 15 foot jump because the squ square you land in is included in that. So imagine that this is five feet closer for the purposes of leaping across um, so that you can just do it as an action because I don't think any of you have less than 20 feet of movement, right? No, I don't. No. I don't think I do. No. Okay, great. Uh, wait, excuse me, just to make sure I get that correctly. Ten feet uh, if your speed is at least fifteen feet. Fifteen feet if your speed is at least thirty. So as long as your speed doesn't change for any reason, which it could, um, just keep that in mind. You can make that jump with a regular action. Uh, and are we at the same like altitude? Are the the, the decks basically level? Um, they're level enough for the uh, purposes of this combat. Yeah. Great. Um, so maybe this boat's slightly higher, but it's not going to affect your leap action. I have another question. Minor bookkeeping, perhaps, issue? Yes, Where's the Atticus? gum chewer in the back. Atticus isn't on the map. <laughs> well, that's, that's a real oversight. On so well, so, <laughs> so, what, so what happened was Atticus f flew, flew up above everyone. Uh, you did a hilarious uh, joke of increasing his size so the perspective actually looked like he was flying toward the camera. That's right. And then I think you immediately just deleted his pawn uh, <laughs> and every record of his character in the journal and then moved on with your life. You know what? That sounds, that sounds accurate, um, but I do have him. And, uh, yeah, you were floating above. There you are, right there. There he is. There's Happy my buddy. Happy as can be. Um, so you're floating, and as we said on Cannon Fodder, uh, you took an extra action last time because hovering itself is an action. But yes, enough about you. Let's talk about me and my characters. Uh, this guy down here, he's got a crossbow out. Uh, as I mentioned to you at the end of last episode, some of them have crossbows out, and some of them are wielding falchions. Uh, well, this dude's got a crossbow out, and he shoots it at Atticus. First action. Uh, actually, first action I'm, is going I'm to... I'm invisible. Then he's not going to shoot at you. <laughs> as simple as simple that. Enough. <laughs> simple enough. Simple enough. Simple as that. <laughs> You're invisible and flying. Okay, then who else is up there? Eris, I'm sorry. Just based on placement alone, you've put yourself in the line of fire. Of course, Suki and Aldo are inside of that cabin, but I'll let you guys figure that out. Uh, it's gonna. I'm going to fire it at uh, Eris. Here we so go. First thing I'm gonna do. I don't do, remember putting myself there. I, be, I don't. I don't remember any of you guys to be, being here. To be, to be fair, Troy, I believe at least Suki is. I don't know about Aldo. I think I'm on top of it. It was like raised. Remember? I think yes. she's standing on top. So okay. I, so if, this actually is accurate then. Yeah, and if she wants to, if they want to fire at me, and that makes more sense, I am outside the room. I just want to make that clear, so no one thinks I'm. Cheating. Okay. Well, I have lots of guys to fire. First one is going to fire at Eris, but the first action it's going to do is hunt prey. Schwa! Because if it hits you, it'll do extra damage, and then it's going to fire. Oh boy. Oh baby, that's going to be a thirty to hit. Ugh. Yeah, that hits, because I'm frightened. <laughs> Let's not forget, we're on the water, and I'm frightened. Oh, oh that's true. Oh, right. right. Yeah. What's your AC? That's not a crit, is it? 24. Okay, you're fine. Um, let me just find my nearest D10. This is going to be a little bit of damage. Oh, minimum damage. It's going to be six piercing, but then because of Hunt Prey, you're going to take an extra max eight damage. So 14 oh. damage total okay. on that attack. 
Uh, and then what this dude is going to do, he's going to slide uh, ten feet, or excuse me, five feet over. And as he moves, he uses an action called running reload, which lets him move and reload the crossbow for free. And that is his action. Good start to the year, Professor Eric. Any questions? Uh, wait, yeah, I've got a question. <laughs> no. Sorry. I, I, I'm confused doing my own thing here. So your first action was hunt prey. Your second action was fire. And your third action was move and reload. Because uh, it was loaded when he got there. It's a running reload, yeah. It was running reload. Okay. Got there, yeah. They were loading as they were sliding in while you were fighting the uh, false Skywin. Great. It is now Ethel's turn. So Ethel? he's a ranger. He is. He is. He? he is. Based on that ability, he's a ranger. He is he? Um, okay, uh, Ethel is going to, well, you guys hired me for a reason. Uh, Ethel is going to swing out past Darius. He's like, oh, excuse me, excuse me. And then he's going to leap onto the other ship. Wow. Okay, obviously, those, obviously imagine those sails are up so you can stand in those. Underneath them, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's two so actions, brave. right? Move and then leap. Uh, yeah, if you had to move to get up and then leap is the second action, yes. Okay, great. And then I will. So there's a guy to my right. And sure there's is. a guy to the to the to the left here. Mm -hmm. they, Ten feet are, away. Are any of them uh, wielding crossbows? Uh, the one that you're standing next to has a falchion. Uh, as does the one uh, to his north. The one uh, that is ten feet away from you has a crossbow. Okay, great. I I will attack uh, this gentleman to my right who's uh, wielding a crossbow. I Fal will. Falchion is the falchion, one. Excuse me. Falchion. Uh, and I will use my Warhammer. Falchion. Didn't Lork have a falchion for a while? He, he sure did. He, he wield, wilt, wielded? Welt? Welt. 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 He wielded. Welt. 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 Okay, Beowulf. What's a falchion? Welt a falchion. <laughs> Joe's been brushing up on his old English. What's a falchion, Joe? <laughs> it's a large curved sword. Uh, like a big kukri? It's, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. Thing, it's what all the orcs have in Lord of the Rings. Basically. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. the big, like big broad-bladed swords. Heavy broad-bladed swords. Yeah. Uh, that's a natural six for a 25. That's a hit. Huh? That's a hit. You get a yeah. high to hit. Now, in first, first edition, action. I believe the Falchione, as we called it, was a crit 18 to 20, right? And a crit, yes. crit ranges don't exist in this, right? In they don't. Now, I wonder if they did give these weapons extra properties to kind of make up for that, because this one does have well, a couple of sweet properties. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. What are they? Mm -hmm. uh, one is forceful. Oh, um, that's a good one. I like forceful. And one is, is sweep. That? So forceful is when you attack with it more than once on your turn, the second attack gains a circumstance bonus equal to the, uh, the number of damage dice. So oh. uh, for this oh, one, it, oh. it only has one damage die, but it basically then makes plus it a one. finesse weapon. Uh, and then sweep gives it another plus one, right? Sweep is a plus one if you attack two different targets. Like right. if you attack a second target on your second action, you get a bonus to hit because it's yeah. sweeping with it. Yeah. So you're fun, almost yeah. getting no negative for doing the two attacks. Well, you're, you're still getting you're the full negative. Minus four. Well, yeah, you're getting yeah, minus four instead of minus five. Minus right. four instead of minus five. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Right. And then well, if I do a forceful sweep, it's only it's technically a net minus three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh, but that's, that's a cool. net minus three with a large weapon that does you know a decent amount of damage as opposed to usually when you're agile or finesse, you're getting one d six maybe. You know. It's yeah. This is a d ten damage for. A yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> Twelve Ooh. points of damage on the falchion wielder. 12 points on old Johnny Falch. Okay, and that was your third action. That's my third action. It is Aldo's turn. Aldo is going to, he is standing on the roof of the central cabin structure on the ship in which we find ourselves. So he's going to step up between Suki and Atticus, uh, Atticus above him. And he's going to uncork a vial of alchemist's fire and toss it at the uh, one of the uh, creatures in the middle of the boat uh, mm -hmm. so Sorry. as to get the falchion wielder that Ethel just attacked and another one in the splash radius. Nice. All right. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. That is a hit. Okay. Oh, wow. Max damage. Uh, that's 20 points of damage. Holy shit! To that oh, guy. Okay. <laughs> and four points of fire damage to each of the other guys flanking him, subject to a reflex save. 
Ah, uh, so if they pass, they take no, Wait, or they take half. Is that right? Uh, yes, I think they, they take half if they on a splash. All right, yeah. so reflex save. All right, the first guy rolls a natural one, uh, so it's okay. a critical fail. I don't know if they take double splash. Awesome. Uh, I'll let you look that up, and then uh, a, uh, probably a critical success with a thirty-one. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that is a critical success. Uh, so yes, that is, I'm sorry, my brain is locked up. <laughs> you know what, while you look it up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give no damage to one that crit succeeded, and I'll give double damage to the other one, and then while you look, if, while we figure it out together, we can always fix it. It's Sounds certainly good. not gonna break the game. Sounds good. Um, cool, you know, the one good thing about having a ton of enemies is for your character, <laughs> because you can That's true. This is yeah, lots this of them at once. Aldo's time to shine. Uh, okay, great. Uh, and then was drawing the Alchemist fire in action? Uh, no, it was not. So, right, so you I'm got going one. to throw a second. Uh, 28. 28 to hit. 28 is a hit. Uh, Fantastic. Yes. Um, and that is nine points of damage. Okay. Um, and uh, that is uh, four, nine, nine total points of damage and then four Reflex. points to each of the flank. I can't okay. remember... I'm so sorry. Yeah. I think I'm getting this wrong because I don't think we've been doing reflex saves for my splash damage before. Um, but uh, I can't and do remember. you think you're supposed to get it or you're not? Or you're not 100 sure? I, I I I am. I don't know if you get a reflex this- save. I'm so sorry. I've been playing so much first edition. I'm <laughs> I'm um, I'm sorry. My brain is locked up. I'm trying. All right. So I'm looking at even- the splash trait. I'm assuming it has the splash trait. When yes. you use a thrown weapon, you don't add your. If a, an attack with a splash weapon fails, succeeds, or critically succeeds, all creatures take the splash damage. On a critical failure, the bomb misses and fire. Add together. It doesn't say anything about yeah, a reflex okay, save. Because we haven't been playing reflex save, like any save, so just get the damage. So, yes. Great. Okay. Uh, so, eight total points of splash damage to each of the guys flanking the guy that I was hitting. Great. Um, that is easy enough to do. And we corrected our own mistake. Okay, wonderful. Um, Eris's turn. There are a lot of these guys. There's eight of them. Only one of them is gone, but you guys, three of you, had a higher initiative than most of them. Uh, I know. I saw eight of these, and I was like, oh, since there's so many, they must not be that powerful. And then it hit me with like a 30, and my AC is lowered, <laughs> but still, um, that's surprising. So I have a bunch of used, I used all my level one spell slots, I think, in Philadelphia. So I do have mage armor on, so I need to remember okay. that. That doesn't affect your hit from before. But I am going to spend two actions to cast mirror image on myself. Um, Smart. So Smart as hell. that means I roll. Do you roll Wait. or do you automatically get the images? I think with the um, second edition, you just get a certain amount of images. You know what? That's a great question. I believe you just get a certain amount of images. Let me see. Uh, I think it's yep. one, two. Uh, oh, it's three. It's just three, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you get three images. Yep. That sounds okay. great. So she great. casts mirror image on herself. I'm like, gets three images. And then I'm going to mark that as cast. And then I'm going to use my focus spells, uh, Needle of Vengeance. So as she casts, and you see like four of her now total. Um, she also just kind of creepily says her name to herself, like, Eris, like maybe kind of holding her side because she was just, <laughs> it's so weird, like, casting on yourself, you have to say your name out loud. Um, so yeah, she casts that Eris. for one act. Eris. 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 Um, it's like Ricky Henderson. And those will be her three actions for her turn. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to play. Uh, let's see, this one uh, at the uh, the most aft, I don't know the fucking boat terms, is going to slide, uh, actually, from where I am, I've got pretty good range. I'm still gonna take an action to slide up um, and fire at Suki. Whether you like it or not! Oh wait, I wanted to hunt prey and then take the action. Crack die, uh, so this will be my last action. This will be a 29 to hit, Sukes. That hits. Yowza. All right, that's going to be 12 points of regular, three, uh, 12 points of slashing, I think I said piercing before, and uh, three points for the hunt prey. 
So three extra. Three extra, okay. yeah. Okay, and that's his action. That was kind of dumb the way I did that, but that's okay. Um, not all enemies are really smart. <laughs> all right, before Suki goes, though, it's going to be number three's turn, who is standing up here. Number three is going to flank Ethel and attack with a falchion. That makes me flat-footed. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I see what I did. That was piercing damage and slashing. Uh, okay. Ooh, man. 29 to hit. That hits. Okay. Damn it. And that's going to be 15 points of slashing damage. Okie dokie. Um, and then I'll attack once more because I forgot to hunt prey. Uh, and that one is going to be a 22 to hit. That misses. Okay. And now it is Suki's turn. Uh, okay, Suki can't get up into the fray. She's not a good melee fighter, but she's going to uh, use her move action instead of jumping across to pull out her composite short bow. And she wants to take a shot at um, the one that just moved up to Ethel also has a falchion. Yes, I'm, I'm denoting the falchion wield. Oh, the thank blue. you. Who, who took the shot at Eris? Who had the uh, composite? Uh, way over here. Mm. And the one that shot you is way uh, to the stern. So the, the most, the one way up front and the one in the back both have crossbows. Uh, she will take the shot. <sighs> she should shoot the one with the crossbow. Sorry, Ethel. All right, she's going to shoot. Shot. She's going <laughs> to shoot the, the, uh, the one shot, furthest to the left uh, who just shot at her. Okay. And let's see. Okay, that's a 26 to hit. That's a hit. Nice. And nice. Okay. Love it. Where are my D6s? Where are my D6s at? <laughs> Where are my D6s? What the? I don't know. <laughs> Sydney. Oh, no. <laughs> this one's on you. Yeah, <laughs> really, we can't really help you with that Six. One. Uh, six plus one piercing damage. All right, so and I'll the call 26, it seven. 26 wasn't a critical, right? No. Okay. Uh, I don't okay. know. <laughs> it has a, it, it has a, compo it, I could, something cool happens on critical, but it's not critical. All right. Uh, is that your turn or do you have more? No, I can only attack once. That's my turn. Okay. All right. You don't have to raise your voice. Um, <laughs> it is Bounty Hunter Four's turn. Also a crossbow wielder uh, is going to shoot at Suki. Uh, first hunt prey, then shoot at Suks. Okay. That's going to be a 21 to hit. No way. Okay. Rude. Nice. Locks it uh, with her bow. Oh, and cool. Then, that's cool. Legolas style. Yes. Yeah. That is pretty cool. I will admit that's cool. And then it's going to step back with a running reload to reload the crossbow. Um, I gotta remember this guy did not reload. Okay. Can you kill some of these guys? I, there's so many. Yeah. Let us play. I'm sure we would love to. Uh, all right. This guy slides over uh, to basically sur well, actually, no, I don't want to provoke. So uh, it's going to slide up to Ethel and uh, hack, uh, move, hunt prey, and then falch. Not going to mess that up again. Uh, oh, oh, that's going to be a 26 to hit. That is a miss. Now, I wonder, <laughs> are you still flat-footed? Uh, Not I think to that, him, though, right? Yep. I think you are in second You're edition. You're just flat-footed, I believe. you just flat-footed, period? Then yeah. yes, it does hit. Yeah, I just read that recently. Um, oh my God, max damage on the falchion for 16, oh. and then an extra Ooh. two for the hunt prey. Uh, 18. So 18 altogether. Oh. Okay. Uh, Ethel, Ethel is alone. Um, Where right, is the now, captain, by the way? They uh, disappeared back into the sails. You're standing there, you look up to the sails, and there's just blood dripping down, but you do not see these figures as they whip in the wind. Uh, all right, I still have one more of these Johnskis, and it's a crossbow guy who's going to shoot at Aldo. First hunt prey, and then a shoot, natural one. Uh, yes, so there it is. There yes. That will there miss. Awesome. Is that a fan from Boonski? Uh, it is, right? Isn't that a fan fumble? So, it's been so long. We don't what confirm do we do here? fumbles, right? We don't confirm no. fumbles? No. Any no. anymore? It, no, we don't confirm fumbles. But uh, while you look that up, uh, let's take a short break. 
Happy New Year, everybody! It's your old pal, Troy LaValle. We have so many exciting things planned for 2023, and one of those exciting things launches next week! If you listen to the State of the Nation, you might have heard me mention a little experiment called Glass Cannon Labs. This is gonna be a live, raw, unpolished look at new gaming groups getting together to play new games! And I'm kicking things off next Wednesday with a little game called a Cyborg. If you watched our New Game Who Dis playthrough of Morkborg, it's the cyberpunk version of that, and so much more. And then the following week, Joe is going to be running Symborum. And then after that, Skid is going to be running Blade Runner. But next Wednesday, January 11th, 2 p.m. Eastern, right here live on twitch.tv slash the glass cannon, I'm running Cyborg. In fact, the only way you can see it is to watch it live or to subscribe to our Twitch channel and watch the VOD. Folks, we are so excited about this series and we hope to see you in the lab. What do you got, O'Brien? I got a... It's from Captain Hodge. Captain, captain Hodge! Oh, is he the captain whose tricorn oh. hat you're after? Perhaps. Captain Hodge. Perhaps Give us your hat. Captain Hodge <laughs> from Cardiff, Wales. Oh! oh. A Welshman. <laughs> hey, Captain mm. Hodge. If I could freeze time in a bottle, uh, a particularly nasty earworm pops into your head at the most Spins inopportune favorite. moment. <laughs> Causing you to lose focus on the task at hand, you become slowed one for 1d4 rounds as you try to get the song out of your head. Hell yeah! I uh, could freeze time in a bottle. I hate that song so much. <laughs> the first thing that All I right, like slowed to do. one for 1d4 rounds, man. You roll four rounds. That's huge. Because once um, once Ethel's dead, it's not so easy to hunt another prey. All right, let's see how many uh, rounds this is gonna be. <laughs> Scooby Dooby Doo. Oh, can't get my D4 out, so I can't roll it. Uh, that's going to be three rounds. Yeah! Nice! nice. Uh, Thank you, Captain Hodge. Way to go, Captain Hodge. Okay. On uh, Wrexham. Three rounds <laughs> slowed. Gross. Okay, so that's going to be... You know, that makes it really hard because now I'm going to have to burn an action to re either reload or hunt prey. Yeah. That's gonna t he'll probably drop his crossbow and start falchioning around like a fool. But mm -hmm. meanwhile, it's Atticus's turn. Atticus, what do you got? Oh boy, Atticus has got nothing. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's just really it's hard. It's almost like not having a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so cold. I mean, you say that, but it, it just is tough when you. Okay. Um. All right. Let's just let's just spice this up. Uh, Atticus will fly down uh, a few feet to basically get level uh, with the ships. Uh, but still staying on our side. Okay, coward. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. He's just going to try to to help Ethel. Um, he's going to come down, seeing the two uh, rangers that are right next to Ethel. He's going to fly down right over the top of his deck and then fire a lightning bolt across at the two of them. So bang, bang. Uh, hit those two guys with a lightning bolt. Wow, okay, cool. So I need reflex saves from those two. Okay, the first one rolled a 25, and the second one rolled a uh, 20. Uh, okay, that is a failure on both. Um, wow. Which is wonderful. Uh, okay, so... Zap, zap! Uh, Full damage. Not not amazing damage. Uh, very, very middling damage. Uh, that is 24 points of damage. Is that heightened, or is that just straight up... That's just straight up lightning bolt. Okay. Yeah. Lightning bolt, 24 points of damage. Well, that first guy is in real rough shape, and uh, the guy behind him isn't feeling too good either. Here's a question for you. Just go back to the slowed guy. So he had used two actions, and he got hit with that slowed. Does the slowed first round take effect now so he doesn't get to use that third action? Or does it Arc start... Arc fan fumble is a made-up rule. So right. you basically do whatever you want. All right, so um, in this case, I mean, obviously, had he already used three actions, I would have just said the next three rounds. But instead, I'll, instead of using that third action, I'm going to have it start this round, and there's two more rounds here. That makes sense. Uh, that's right. This is a made-up rule. All right, big old <laughs> lightning bolt. Is that your turn? Uh, yes, that is my turn. Because yep, you move. That's my turn. All right, it is number five and number six's turn. Um, number five is the one that Ethel first attacked. Is going to hunt Ethel and attack twice. 
First attack with the falchion is a natural 20. Oh, that's not good at all. Oh, that we is have to get over there. We have to go help Bethel. That is very, very bad. I, I'm assuming the hunted prey damage doesn't double. Uh, I'm not going to double it uh, like in the old school precision way. Unless Pretty sure it knows does. You think it does? Okay. Yeah, I think, I it, think it, it does. does. Yeah. Okay. Side you want, Joe? <laughs> I'm I'm on the rules side. <laughs> um, well, in the meantime, I will roll. Uh, you just double it. Why am I rolling two dice? Uh, the regular damage is not awesome. Twenty six regular, and you think I doubled the hunt the uh, hunted prey? If so, that's going to be another six points of hunted prey damage. Okay. Two uh, skids to one Troy outruled me, Matthew. I'm sorry. <laughs> a skid and a joke. Sorry. Uh, we're not pulling a crit because this is unnamed, right? Is that what's happening? That is unnamed, yes. Although I named him, and I'm keeping it to myself. Uh, I like to have little backstories for all the guys. It really helps me get into the character of these murderers. Uh, that was only its first attack. It hunted prey with the first one. Now, you don't take the hunt prey damage should I hit again. It's only on the first attack, but the damage is already done. Um, and a natural one to even things out on the oh, other great. end. There we uh, go. A 20 followed by a one, just to keep Joe on his toes over there, uh, because though he is unnamed, he will take a fan from Boney. Yes. Uh, all right, trying to confirm this. Uh, this critical uh, on precision. It doesn't say under the ability for the ranger, so I'm, I'm gonna go to the next stage. But okay. uh, right now we have a melee fumble, is that what we have? Uh-huh, now Matthew, should we find out that that's not true, you get three hit points back, but for now. All right, this you. one from Ben in Chilliwack, British Columbia. Uh, Chilliwack. Canada, Chilliwack. Uh, uh, and in a sense of impending doom. You feel a sudden sense of impending doom. Worse yet, everyone else can sense it in you too. <gasps> if this fumble is drawn by a PC, you are doomed one until your next rest. Oh no. And PCs may notice the bad luck you give blah, blah blah. If this fumble is pulled by the GM, all attacks against the target gain a plus one circumstance bonus to hit. Okay. Wow. So okay. just mark that guy and every all of our attacks against him get a plus one circumstance bonus. That's green, that little green dot means go give yourself a plus one to hit him. <laughs> go ahead and give yourself, ahead and give yourself a plus one. <laughs> go ahead and give yourself a plus one. Uh, all right, so that's his turn. We're having a good time. We're having so um, much fun. And now it is uh, the student in the back's turn. He is going to... Uh, just based on positioning, I have to burn an action uh, to move up, and then he is going to fire at Eris. Uh, Eris, of course, has some images there. Well, move up, hunt, prey, fire. Uh, all right, that's going to be a 29 to hit. Um, um, so that will hit, but I have to roll a d4 to see if it's me or an image. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. I'll let you um, roll. It's a three... Uh, I'm pretty sure that doesn't hit. I think it's a four. Where? I believe it's only on a one to two, and then it changes. So one image is going to go away. Okay. Um, but yeah, look, at, it says it right in the text of the spell. They spell it out a lot more this time around. So one, one image on one is One on one D4 hits me, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then one to two when there's three images, blah, blah, blah. Okay, very cool. All right. So you're down to two images. And that was its turn. It's going to reload. Wait, move... Hunt prey. No, actually, it can't reload. So there's two, two of these guys can't reload, um, and that I believe is the end of round one. Give yourself a hey, hand. Wow. We did a round. Oh, we did a round. Oh. First round of the new year. Stretch those <laughs> fat fine muscles. Um, I only took I only took sixty points of damage. <laughs> it's like when you go to work out for the first time in a while, and you do like a workout and it's like really hard and then you like can't move for like a week. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> yeah, our brain's gonna be sore tomorrow. My hammies, um, ooh, my hammies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I had said, oh, I see what I did there. That's, that dude had a, well, I fucked that up. Let's get that blue dot off there. Has he had a crossbow? All right, this guy in the back, he is going to um, drop his crossbow for free. He's going to leap to the other side. Uh, that's first action. Second action. Oh, God. He's going to draw the falchion. And then he's just going to stand there. That's what he's going to do this round. <laughs> and then he's there. He's there. He's on your ship. And it's Ethel's turn. Okay. Uh, Ethel uh, is has been pretty badly fucked up. 
Uh, but he's got a weak, an eight weak enemy and an opportunity, so he's going to swing uh, with the warhammer against yeah. <laughs> the guy that I get a plus one to. Who's okay. also been hit by the lightning bolt. Full yep. blast. Come on! That is a 30 to hit, including that the plus one. Is very close to a critical. <laughs> oh. But it is just okay. a regular hit. Uh, you might want to will... say it's one point away from a critical. You might want to oh, say it feels okay. like you okay. were just to know. Single like point. you just missed the heart. Uh, 20 points of damage to that guy. Oh. And that Ooh. young gentleman is dead. Oh, <laughs> no. And that young gentleman <laughs> is dead. Okay, so Are you Ethel still flanked? Then... No, I'm not flanked. You yes. are not. Uh, how and Ethel then is going to let's make let's let's do something fun. Ethel's going to slide back further onto the ship behind Ooh. see the uh, the guy wielding the falchion that was flanking him, and he's going to use the shove action to try to throw this guy into the drink. <gasps> yes. The old shove action. Yes. <laughs> I so, love it. So uh, this is so, an athletics check against your fortitude DC. Yeah, and it has different things depending on critical success, success and critical failure. And for the record, you need to have a free hand to do this. I believe from the last episode, and if not, we can just establish that I did it while I was healing myself. Uh, I do not have the hatchet drawn. I sheathed the hatchet. Um, so I do have a free. I use my left hand to shove, try to shove this. I sh shove him in the chest and knock him off. All right, athletics is going to be against DC 19. Great. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I think that's going to be a critical. Uh, I rolled a natural 19, I have a plus 18 on athletics. Oh, oh yeah, that's a crit <laughs> That's very, very much a critical. Matthew, I'll, I'll give you the honors of reading what happens. You push your target up to 10, up to 10 feet away from you. Uh, you can stride after it, but you must move the same distance and in the same direction. Uh, so I will push him five feet into the water. Oh. <laughs> yes! You, you push him awesome. onto Arista Square? Right. Uh, <laughs> and then, actually, I will... Um, uh, I will move up with it back. I'll do so. I'll, I will r basically like I ram him into him with my hand and just shove him into the water. Now, here's something you may not know. Uh, this guy's backstory that I wrote last night uh, is that he can't swim. Oh, uh, wow. that is a Hold really on. lucky thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> Troy. Well, I mean, this is up to you. Joe's you got may... his brand new core rule book pocket. I got my, my pocket, book. John. So I'm going nuts over here. Me too, bro. Um, so first of all, man, have I been digging on doubling critical precision damage, and there is nothing that says you don't double precision damage. Nothing. Yeah, that's something from Starfinder. That it was the yeah. same way. Yeah, it basically well, just flat out says, uh, you know, on, under the damage type, it just says it's damage, and the, you double all forms of damage, except damage that comes specifically from a critical effect, like a critical specialization effect on a weapon. Like if it gets an extra 1d10 on a crit, you don't double the 1d10, you just get the extra. So uh, I think you double it. Yeah, just uh, reading doubling and having damage. Yeah, du doubling is like, yeah. You know, it's funny because we talked about like either doubling it or rolling, you know, doubling the die versus doubling the result. And it says it's like, it, it's well, better for you to double the die as you get higher in level. Here's something, if you look at under, uh, if you look at page 451, doubling and having damage, benefits you gain specifically from a critical hit like the flaming weapons runes persistent fire damage or the extra damage die from the fatal weapon trade aren't doubled. That's what I just said. Oh. Yeah. That's exactly what I said. And I, and I said it like that, too. I was like, this is an interesting fact. And you nodded, <laughs> Here's and something then you ran it right back to me. On page 451 of the core rule book, it says, benefits you gain specifically from a critical... <laughs> We're having a good time. Before really you send this poor man off to his death, Professor Eric brought something up uh, in Philly that we did not talk about on Can of Fodder, and that was my fault. I just missed it. But um, you do have the option, uh, when you are pushed off of an edge like this, to, to grab, grab a ledge, a ledge as a, a reaction. Mm -hmm. Would you like this guy to do that, or would you just like to let him go? And So uh, it's a free let's reaction? Get this, let's get out of this. Even sample. if you don't have a reaction? Uh, it, it, if you don't have a reaction, you can't do it. But it, no, it is a reaction. I wonder, I guess everybody has a reaction, right? Yeah, you have a reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if he didn't have, specifically spend didn't his reaction. It. But what's the yeah. DC? To grab a ledge. Uh, the DC. Oh, I was just, I was just looking at this. Uh, I, I love that there is one. You must succeed at a reflex save, usually at a climb DC. 
So it'd basically be, what's the DC to climb the edge of the boat? You know, it's sort of well, like... Let's see at. what I roll. I rolled a, a natural three, so he falls in. Okay! <laughs> um, whoa, 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 it's wet! Oh, it's a oh. deck! <laughs> um, great, I think what I'll do is, rather than put an X on him, I'm just gonna draw water on him. I love imagining, too, <laughs> Matthew, that Ethel, like, moves within the, the red sails, you know, like these flapping red sails and like kind of disappears for a second and then just like from the sails just pushes Ooh. this guy <laughs> off the side of the boat. You know what, Matthew? Uh, uh, good use of the shove trait. Why don't you give yourself a bottle cap? Hey, oh, there nice you go. Go. Stretch hey, that system out, earn a nice little cap. That's how we do. Um, so now you have two caps because we start every session with a cap. Um, Is that your turn? That's my turn. Aldo Casimir. Aldo is going to continue to uh, huck bombs across the <laughs> gap there. He's going to throw another bomb at the one directly in front of him that's uh, trying to catch the second fellow in the blast radius. Uh, first attack, that is a that is a, exactly a 21 to hit. That is a hit. All right. And that is nine points of damage to the target, the guy on the left, and four points to the guy next to him. Stupid question. Uh, does the guy who's hit also take the splash damage? Yes. I... Ah, yes. Okay. That is included in my... Oh, that's included in the nine. I see. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> before I spend an action, do, are, do these guys look... Hu are they just human? Humanoid? Yeah, they do look. Uh, they do look human. They look similar to, um, you know, just any old uh, pirate, basically. Um, okay. Yeah, their 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 clothing is not of a style that you've seen, but they all appear to be human. Okay. Dirty um, looking. Dirty humans. Dirty. I'm a little <laughs> scallywaggish. Scallywaggish, if you will. Okay. I'm a little. Aldo is probably a little put off by the droplets of blood spraying. Everywhere, I assume, off of these blood-soaked <laughs> sails. But uh, he's gonna throw a second bomb at the same guy. Oh, that's a miss. Uh, yeah, that's just a miss. Okay, but they both take splash, right? Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> splash trait. Yep. Uh, no, it's uh, no. I don't think they do. If an attack with a splash weapon fails succeeds or critically succeeds, all creatures within five feet of the target, including the target, take the splash damage. Okay, there yeah, we go. so there you go. So they both uh, take four. Four points each. And yeah, I'll just uh, go ahead and throw a third. Uh, that is a 90, that's another miss. So that's another four points of damage to both of them. Yeah, I mean, for you, we've lamented in the past about like using that third action to attack, but for you, it's actually pretty beneficial because yeah. you're still doing a minimum four. Guaranteed damage. And will that go up as you level up that splash? Yeah, well that I did, I spent an ability, uh, I think it's a feat to uh, increase the splash damage, my last level up, and yeah, that will, I, there are ways of like making that go higher. Oh, that's very cool, okay. Uh, wonderful, then that is Aldo's turn, and now it goes to Eris. I have been racking my brain here staring at my character sheet, trying to figure out how to give Ethel a million eyes. Because <laughs> you jumped over, <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I can't touch you now. But at level two, I do a class feat, living hair, and it's an instant thing. So in, uh, oh, before I do that, Troy, yes. what would your definition of several be? Uh, <laughs> more Five to seven. Oh, so I can't cast my hair to the next boat. Oh, because, well, no, remember, even though there's 10 feet, it's just, it's it's a mistake on my part. The boat is actually five feet close. Oh, okay, So you Sweet. can extend your hair. <laughs> Plus, that's really fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, you can, what does it say, you can extend it several feet? Instantly, yeah, it says several feet. Come on, Paizo, feet. make it I clear. know, come on. I'm um, sitting here Googling uh, what several means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no way am I not gonna let you do this just for rule of cool. So you extend your hair to Instantly, be able to cast a touch spell? My hair extends. It could be my hair, eyebrows, if I had a beard or a mustache, whatever. Several feet, and I can manipulate it for weapons or whatever, but I'm gonna use it to do my touch spell countless eyes onto Ethel oh. so that for one minute <laughs> can't cannot be flanked. be flanked again. Oh my Amazing. gosh. 
<laughs> that's uh yeah, that's does he very actually cool. get eyes all over like him? my yeah like my hair just like wafts in the wind and comes over to you and just like wraps around your arms or something and then just like pulls away oh and you did you, the thing again oh <laughs> you're welcome yeah. that's cool kate give yourself a bottle cap that is also yeah. very nice. cool. <laughs> yes. and i like that you had to try and figure out how can i do this without how can going i over break there. this uh very cool is that your that takes three actions um, I still have one action left, um, and can I do like some sort of knowledge on maybe the big baddies that are like around, but I can't see? Yeah, the, you caught a quick glimpse of them. So pick which one you want to look at. I said that one had like an alien type visage, his jaw like distended, he had huge teeth in there, and the other one was this dark spectral looking form that was feminine in shape. Um, maybe the dark spectral one. Okay. Um, what do you have? Do you have religion? Um, I do have religion. Our uh, religion would seem good as you could see through this woman. Let's see. Come on. Ooh. Natural 10 for 21. 21. All right. It appear. This is what I'll tell you. It appeared to be a wraith. Oh. Oh, oh. wow. A wraith that had clinging to it, almost like a, the uniform of someone on a ship. Um, but this is a wraith. And with the 21, I'll give you one piece of uh, helpful information. Is there any particular information you're looking for? Um, I guess, like, what? A weakness? A weakness. Uh, okay. They are... I don't know if this will help, but this is what you asked for, as uh, they're powerless to sunlight. Okay. If they're caught in sunlight, they become uh, very, very weak. It almost that they, they can't attack. Oh, um, interesting. So if you have some sort of spell that uh, uses sunlight, that would be very helpful. It's only sunlight, not like light from another source? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you, unless you have a light that can mimic sunlight, eh, we'll talk about it. You know, Maybe you'll never see her again. Okay. <laughs> and that's my turn. Yeah, a little sunlight powerlessness. They, they become stunned to and clumsy to. Ooh. All right. Ooh. Fun use of the third Axione. It's so that was be... the, sorry, that was the captain? No, that was the, the spectral woman. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, spectral lady. She's a lady. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, spectral, spectral lady. lady. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is uh, the dude up front. Uh, he's gonna slide up to Eris, hunt prey, and take one wet swing. <laughs> Why is it wet? <laughs> uh, 17 to hit is a miss. Um, miss. Wait, I attacked Ethel, not Eris. Oh. Um, uh. Why'd I say oh. Eris? You guys, you need to change your name so they don't both start with E. <laughs> Mine has a little accent mark on it. Ah, accent aigu? Exotegu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is now Suki's turn. Okay. Coming next to the dance floor, Suki. Suki. <laughs> She's a lady. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate good times. That's your stripper song. <laughs> that's my. Oh, it's supposed to be my stripper song. No, that's not my stripper song. It's not a hot song. I'll no. think of a better <laughs> stripper song next. Well, that's a, she's a lady, isn't either? Uh, maybe boot, you know what it would be? These boots are made for walking. That's and a good one. That's just, and I'm wearing boots. I kind of like celebrate though, because you don't expect it to be hot. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I think I would appreciate celebrate. I like celebrate because no one knows how to feel. What are we doing? Everyone just gets a little, a little bit, a little bit of like a jolt of so sexy. <laughs> Uh, all right, Suki pulls out uh, an arrow still with her composite short bow and whoop, whoop, lets it fly at the uh, person next to Ethel that just Ooh. slid up to swing at Ethel. Bring it. Okay, I will. Like you read it. Damn it, that's not gonna, uh, oh no, that's a 17. 17. Um, yeah, no, that's a miss. It's a miss, all right. I'm gonna take another shot, same person. Getting good spells. You know, I do have a spell. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna try something that's not a spell. I'm trying to save my spells. We have two main people. These are just the 
bodyguards. You don't see them. Maybe they'll never come back. They're gonna come back. Uh, I'm gonna try. <laughs> I see the first shot misses. I'm not that great with my bow and arrow, and I'm gonna try something different. Throw I'm it into the water. Use my deception and try to uh, create a diversion. Ooh, and a faint. A, f- or a faint is different. There's also create a diver. I guess I could do either a faint or create oh. a diversion. They're both one action. Uh, and I, love I am faint. It's very uh, underused in our games in uh, 1E. Yeah, uh, it's, that, it's something fate. that's way more. You should be able to use way more in, in 2E with that third superflu- often superfluous feeling action. It's something you can <laughs> do with it. Uh, I agree. I agree. So All maybe. Right, so what do you want to do? Okay, I would like to, I guess, do a faint. What I'm going to do is you hear Suki go. And from out under her tunic, uh, behind her, her mm-hmm. snake Pepsi comes out and curls itself around an arrow of hers. And she's gonna fire the arrow with Pepsi attached to the other boat. So I'm making, I'm doing a feint uh, to not have them notice. I'm doing like a deceptive fire because I'm not hitting anybody. I just want to get Pepsi onto the ship. Um, so will you let me use those two actions to create like a distraction. They're not noticing that Pepsi's arriving on the Yeah, the so what it is, is you're firing Pepsi over there. I'm gonna have you roll the attack to just make sure it, it gets onto the boat. <laughs> just is this a specific one. ability you have? <laughs> well, no. no, create a diversion is just a straight up uh, mental action that you can do. Assuming Pepsi gets over there, then you can use another action to create a diversion. How big is Pepsi? <laughs> Pepsi's a snake. Size of a a regular size snake. Yeah, normal snake. And you're going to fire it on an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's you, fun. It curls around the yeah, arrow. and Also, Pepsi is a constrict- constrictor. No, it girl. is. Pepsi is a constrictor. One of its yeah. moves is that when it threatens people and coils around them, they, be- can't, they become uh, slowed or stunned when I'm attacking them. It's like a cool thing we have together. That sounds so. like the size of a snake that would fit on an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's four arrows you know that what? I have tied together, and it's called the Pepsi Flyer. <laughs> so it's and we do it. Pepsi Challenge. Pepsi flyer. This is the, the Pepsi Challenge. That's the name of the move. Wait, yeah, no, and I Pepsi think Joe has poked a hole in your bad idea. We do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just throw them? How just big throw is the snake? I thought it was I a garter just, snake that could yeah, fit around a I yeah, can throw him over. Picture. I can throw him over. It's 10 feet. I can chuck him over. I just thought it'd be cool to put him on. Fine. Is here's it a the Roman snake. candle? She just throws it on the splat <laughs> plants on the dick. I'm dying laughing. All right, okay. so you're, you're you going to have I mean, you are raised, <laughs> so it's a pretty easy toss. Just roll a d20. Let's see if Pepsi <laughs> makes the jump. Uh, do I get any bonus? Nope. Okay, it's a four, Still roll it's a four, a one. It's a 14. No, it's a 14. Okay, good. I just want to see you roll a one because I would have killed that snake so quick. <laughs> uh, all right, so Pepsi goes flying in the air over to the other side, and they're all just watching Pepsi, <laughs> a flying snake. And, and then Ethel, Ethel's afraid of snakes. And Ethel oh. just goes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel jumps in the water. Ethel jumps in the water. <laughs> Uh, all right, let me put a snake here. Yeah, uh, and then can can Pepsi act then? No, now you're gonna create a diversion. That's what you're gonna do. Oh, okay, okay, with my deception. Yep, there's Pepsi. Okay. Let's see. And what what is the diversion? You're gonna have the snake be like, hey, 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 like your style. Uh, you know what? No, I think it is chaotic. I think it's like, now there is a snake on the boat. She threw, it's clear that she threw over this big snake. So she's trying to get the people away from Ethel and from our side. So we can now try to get on the boat and make some room for us. Cause everybody's bunched up at the front. So I think the, di- the di- diversion is the snake itself. Okay. Did you read the text of create a diversion? No, sorry. I have like a shorthand list of stuff. Oh, because it does stuff. Like what it basically create a diversion does is, is if you succeed against a deception against their perception DC, you become hidden to them. Oh, so, so maybe I thought I'm... you were throwing the snake so they would look at the snake and then that was how we would resolve then, you being hidden. Then let's do that. That's yeah, let's go with that. As okay, so reasoning. roll a deception check against their perception DC and then there's results depending on success or failure. That's a 24. My deception is a plus 12. That's a 24 and their perception DC it might be high because they're rangers. But they're oh, also minions. Oh, yeah. Is uh, is twenty four? So you hit it. Ah, oh. exactly. 
Oh, nice. Uh, they have plus 14 perception, you had 10, 24, so you hit it exactly, so you succeed. And what that means in terms of uh, mechanics, as it were, is that you become hidden to each creature whose perception DC is less than or equal to yourself. So you're hidden to all of them. Oh, uh, amazing. This oh, allows cool. you to sneak away. This lasts until the end of your turn or until you do anything except s step or use the hide or sneak action of the stealth skill. If you oh, strike cool. a creature, the creature remains flat-footed against that attack and then you become observed. If you do anything else, you become observed. So basically, your next attack to anyone, they're gonna be flat-footed as long as you don't do anything to them. You could also just continue like buffing your allies and they wouldn't see you. But the minute you do sort of an offensive action against them, you know you're no longer gonna be hidden. But you'll get that free attack, or not free attack, but a flat, they'll be flat footed against the first time you decide to get offensive. Ooh, cool. Well, that is the end of my turn. So I guess I'm I'm just waiting now. But. I'll tell you, it's only the beginning of the year. It's the best 15 minutes I've spent um, since the year started <laughs> was that. Was that turn? Um, <laughs> and then my snake will join initiative order after me, or yeah, how's it work with uh, animal companions? My favorite good. thing in all. Of is it an actual animal companion, or is it a familiar? Is it a companion? Nope. It's my companion. Yeah. You you have to spend an action for it to do anything. Did you, do you have an action? You have to command the animal. <laughs> no. So, so it can't do next anything. round. It but it does have its turn. own initiative. It has its own initiative. So, so then I should roll. You should roll it now. Okay. It goes into initiative, but it has no actions until you spend an action to command it. All right, 25 a niche. Okay, Pepsi has entered the field. Pepsi oh. has entered the field. Um, and Pepsi rolled higher than you, so Pepsi <laughs> won't go to the next round. Um, <laughs> I'm sure, uh, sure that's how it works. Um, it is uh, these dudes' turn. It is number four's turn. Where is that? Some gum. Number four dead? Oh no, number four is standing right next to Ethel. That is a crossbow wielder. Um, so it's gonna, oh God, it's in a real bad position there. It's gonna move away from Ethel, which will actually provoke if you choose Wonderful. to use it. Oh, I choose to use it. Okay. Uh, Warhammer. Uh, Great game. 24 to hit. That is a hit. Nice. nice. It's a natural five. Nice. Um, <laughs> Amazing. Uh, that is 16 points of damage. So it's like trying to get away. It's like, ah, you just hit in the back with a war hammer. Oh. <laughs> Wait, does it provoke from Pepsi as well? Uh, as a matter of fact, it does. I forgot <laughs> yeah. to put that does thing Pepsi there. Does Pepsi have an attack of opportunity? Yeah, Probably does not. Does Pepsi have the reaction? I don't know. Did, he take the feet? Did Pepsi take the feet? No, Pepsi <laughs> doesn't have many special abilities or feats at this point in time. Okay, so then no, I guess I'm gonna not. go out on a limb. Pepsi sucks, Pepsi. Coke is better. Yeah, you should've went with Coke. <laughs> I just, I, just wanna, I, I just want to read the transcript where it talks about you firing Pepsi onto the deck of the ship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why I wanted to be like, is this a class feat? What are you talking about? <laughs> and then she wrapped the boa constrictor around a tiny arrow and fired it. <laughs> it's just so funny. Like, people can get... God. It's just... Yeah, I, you, people be like, you're playing a fantasy game. You're just making stuff up. What does it matter? <laughs> but there's something to me that bothers me so much about just ignoring physics at all. Entirely, it just I can't I can't stand it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fair enough. No, no, no. It's fair. I you're right. I it was stupid. You know so what makes an arrow so effective? It's lightness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Suki would know that. She would yeah, know she's true. elven. So you, that's why she just lassoed the snake in a big circle yeah. and chucked it off. Yeah. Yeah. Right, as yeah. elves do. Um, all right, this guy takes takes a big load of damage from Ethel. Steps up. Hunts prey on Suki and fires. Uh, all right, gonna be close. Gonna be a twenty-one, Suki. No, 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 no. Suki is hidden. Shit out of here, right? To oh, all... I'm hidden. Yeah. You can't all even that's see me. Right, so I wouldn't even attack you. So that would be a, a twenty-one against uh, Eris. Eris, that's a miss. I'm assuming. Yes. What? Hidden me. Uh, but that <laughs> will. <laughs> That will remove an image, right? Uh, oh, yes, right. Because if oh, I miss I'm, but don't critically fail, you lose an image. I'm like spending so much of my extra energy looking at what I'm going to do next that like yeah, <laughs> you're I hitting mean... me. I'm like, wait, what? Um, <laughs> all right. Great. So, I all roll right, so you're a down D6. to one image and one. No, it's just if, if I miss but don't critically fail, you just oh, lose an image. I do. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Um, it is 
number seven's turn. We're at number seven. Oh, there, there they be. Uh, number seven is going to hunt. Is Atticus, you still invisible? No, you no, use now uh, visible. visible. All right, so hunt Atticus and fire. Uh, nat two, uh, that's gonna be a miss. And then I will- uh, Sweet. Sl slide up next to Ethel uh, using the running reload uh, to get that free reload. And then next guy is number dose. Number dose is the one that is slowed one. Um, so he is going to, uh, free action, drop his crossbow. Oh, no, he's a falchion. Wait, isn't he a falchion guy? Yeah, he is a falchion guy. Um, so he's going to move up one and can't hunt prey. We'll just swing at Ethel. That's probably going to be a hit with a natty 18. Will it be a crit, though? 31. It is a hit, not a crit. Okay. Uh, a measly nine points of damage. How you feeling there, Ethel? Pretty bad. Oh, God, I can't even imagine! The worst part is, it's Atticus's turn. It oh, all hits is... so bad. What <laughs> horrible news. <laughs> horrible news! <laughs> Sad music plays. <laughs> what news from the front? Um, okay, this is super risky and I'm very scared. Atticus is going to fly over the gap between the two ships. The water splashing between the two. Uh, he you just look down and you see all these like bioluminescent fish just lighting up the area between the two boats. That is wild. Uh, he's a whoosh, whoosh, and he's going to come across uh, to the other ship and and the light. Yeah, and he's going to utilize his bonded object, his uh, John Jamski. Um, mm -hmm. I forget what it's called now. I'm blanking. I got too much going on. Uh, his his uh, uh, elder myth. It's the elder mythos scholar item. His and amulet the around like, his neck. <laughs> yeah, the thing Doctor that's Strange like Strange amulet. <laughs> his uh, Doctor Strange, John, and it twists and opens, and he will drain his bonded item's power. Bo drain his bonded item's power to recast a spell he's already cast today. Oh, yes. Oh, Lightning nice. bolt. Bang, 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 oh, bang. Through oh, four nice. dudes. Oh, nice. what a great. Oh, beautiful. You must feel so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see, I was, like I was waiting, waiting for Ethel. Yeah, I was waiting for Ethel to checkers. get out of that line. Uh, he was in that line in round one, and I was like, I can't kill Ethel. Uh, so yeah, he he gave me an opening. So four reflex saves, Troy. Wait, Ethel's Wait, not in that line. Ethel I am in the line. line. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my my roll twenty is not updated. <laughs> Unfortunately, the hand is off the chest. No. Uh, what do you want to do here? You've got a great opportunity. Right, awesome. Ethel Give me fifteen take... minutes uh, to plan another turn. <laughs> as a wizard. <laughs> This is great. I'm so I'm so psyched. <laughs> well, don't you think the greater good here is to do that attack and just let Ethel uh, figure it out? Ethel is spry. He's got great reflexes. Nah, he's too close to go. Whose side down. are you on, Troy? <laughs> uh, the bounty hunters. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, he's on the side of his own <laughs> here. The the enemy. No, this is brutal. Okay, um, <laughs> and now my roll twenty won't load. Uh, so I'm I'm utilizing the the stream map. In order to, to move, <laughs> so Is sick that to my line stomach. There on that map that you can barely um, see. <laughs> so, uh, do it, Atticus. So, just do it. Yeah, just do he it. Says Ethel yells, hoping to move the game along. You see uh, Atticus's hands crackling, and Ethel yells, "Do it!" Blood so streaming down from rude. his chest. Did anybody, <laughs> did anybody take any damage? Has any of these guys taken any damage? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I can tell you uh, that the one that was in the front of that line is on his last legs. Um, the first one flanking uh, Ethel also on his last legs. The one behind him on his last leg. I mean, okay, everybody's pretty banged there. up. Yeah. Okay. Now, the in one that way case, in the back, and the one uh, to the north are in great shape. Okay, just do it. Slow. Just do it. Um, no, that's okay. I'm not going to do it. I, I will. I'm not, dude. It could put you out. I don't want to put you out. I can't. Do I it. have an extra bottle cap. I could roll. I can roll the reflex save twice. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, be like, Ethel, look out! Uh, cartwheel, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to once again come wow. across, open his spotted object, and fire. Uh, so reflex saves along the line, everybody. All right. Please. First one, twenty-seven. Second one, natural twenty. Uh, third one. <laughs> third one is a uh, 
26. And the last one is a 26. So 27. Every single 10. one of them succeeded. Every I single got a 20, one. And Ethel got a 28. So that's a success as well. All right, so um, only one of them critically succeeded. Um, everyone else will take half damage. Critical success will take none. Okay. Uh, I rolled two ones on 4d12. Uh, oh, oh, my God. Just, wow. Ah, uh, it makes me so sick to my stomach. Uh, all right, so 10 points of damage to everybody. Everybody takes 10 points of damage. Okay, well... Uh, Ow! The, the first <laughs> one uh, goes down. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. The second one doesn't take any damage because he critically succeed. Uh, the next one uh, is still up. There's 10 points of damage. And then the last one uh, also still up. Another 10 points of damage. Okay. All right, Thanks, that's Tim. it. That's all I got. You, you done good, but not good enough. Uh, all right, it is number six's turn. Number six is the one. Is number six gone? Oh, you just killed. No, number six is gone. All right, so that is. All right. It, it goes right back to round three, and it's number eight's turn. Number eight is the one that came onto the boat. So now number eight is going to, because Aldo and Suki are up top, number eight is going to hunt Eris, that has one remaining image, slide up and swing with the falchion. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. And a natural one no. attack! <laughs> what, what'd you say? Natural one. Oh, Critical that's great. Failure. Yeah, that's very good. So, and that means you will keep your image because that's the only miss where you retain your image. Worst, worst possible thing that could have happened. Awesome. Um, Joe, what's this? Dumble. I'm gonna call them Dumbles. Dumb. We got a Dumble from Cam in Richmond, Virginia. Mm. Uh, but I wanted to be an adventurer. Something about your miss is strangely familiar. Suddenly you're reminded of a time when you didn't want to be an adventurer. You wanted to be something else entirely. You become fascinated and stupefied too for 1d4 rounds. However, if you can sing at least one verse of the Lumberjack song by Mighty Python, reduce the duration <laughs> by half. You are allowed to convince Skid to sing this on your behalf if he can. Um, well, I'll have Skid correct me because he'll know if it's right or wrong. It's, I'm a Lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day? Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you reduced that duration of it, though. He didn't you, actually sing it. He, he just sort of it. recited it. Mm, That's true. Interesting. So, full effect. Well, full effect. <laughs> so, uh, as ruled by the Monty by the next one, <laughs> that would be full effect. <laughs> uh, was that uh, Flying Circus or was that? Uh, yeah. uh, that was that was on Flying Circus, and yeah. they did it. They did it at the Hollywood Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Kate, big Monty Python fan. Oh yeah, I, I'm with it right now, <laughs> very much. Cindy, you got to be a guy. I'm not smiling and looking at my spell sheet. <laughs> yeah, Cindy, it's a TV big... show. You'd love it. Skid, uh, oh. Cindy, do you have a big poster of Life of Brian on your wall? <laughs> I don't. I don't think I've seen that. I like Monty Python, but what is the what's the Flying Circus? Uh, that TV was show. their television show that oh. they started off doing. I've BBC. never seen. I'm gonna look it up. I have you know never what? seen that. I think it's still on Netflix. I think all the episodes are on Netflix. Are they really? I I'll think watch so. that. Yeah. I have the uh, I have the entire show on TV, on DVD. Uh, yes. Can you, mail, can you mail them to me, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> so one by, yes, one by one, I'll mail you. Like early TV. Netflix. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll yeah. When you send one back, he'll send you another. One. We'll call it Matflix. Yeah. Matflix. 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 <laughs> this is very confusing. Uh, <laughs> Joe, I, I take it you're not a Monty Python guy, right? Uh, no, no, I am not. Uh, oh, I, I find it funny, but I cannot uh, quote it. I, I, I haven't seen it enough time. Oh, man. You're no true nerd. It's just a flesh wound. There you yeah. go. That's Monty Python. Nice. It's a great one. I love the Holy Grail. It's a, it's a great movie. Uh, Your arm's no. off. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> well, what's that, then? <laughs> <laughs> a uh, lot of the individual <laughs> sketches are on YouTube from Flying Circus, but, like, if you want to get the full effect, you got to, like, watch You the have episode. to watch the whole... Yeah, because each Netflix. sketch will like bleed into another. They were they didn't like punchlines, so this is like this, this. Yeah, the full effect is like getting the whole experience uh, of, over the half hour. Can't wait to watch All it right, after you're this. stupefied too for how many rounds? You got to roll a d4. Are you gonna have them? What are you gonna do? Um, don't worry about what does stupefied do. 
Uh, it affects your mental faculties mainly and, and your skill checks related to wisdom, charisma, and intelligence. It also prevents you from... I mean, it forces you to make a flat check to cast spells. All right, it doesn't it's seem like it's going to be relevant. I rolled a one. All right, so it's as, are you having it? No, I'll leave it as one. Okay. So it is one round. You are stupefied, too. Basically, it affects your wisdom, charisma, intelligence, and any skills or abilities that branch off of those. Okay. Um, he's real dumb. Oh, wait. I put on the wrong guy. Anyways, uh, it is now Ethel's turn. Okay. Um, I am going to take a swing with the Warhammer against uh, this fellow uh, to my left, uh, to the east of me. To the east. The, the east, yes. Uh, that will be a 24 to hit. Yep. Okay, uh, 21 points of damage. Look at that row of eggs. Oh, wow, nice. Uh, row of dead bodies <laughs> yeah, in the we're wake lining of them up. And it's Six nice, they're health. already close to the edge. We can just push the bodies off. Yeah, that'll be not much work. Just shove them off. <laughs> um, and then I want to do something fun. Because you only get to go so many times. It's true. I just want to make check, make sure. Yep. Okay. Great. Uh, and then to the uh, the guy to my right, to the west of me, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to grapple him. Use my athletic skill to grapple him. Oh, is Ooh. that against my fortitude DC? Fortitude DC. That's what I just checked. Okay. DC 19. That is a 30. Oh, I didn't check to see what critical CC. Oh, that is a critical success. Uh, if it has anything. Ooh. Might be you can take an item from his person. Ooh. Can I? As an action. Take action. a scratch and throw it in the uh, sea. Your target is restrained <laughs> until the end of your next turn unless you move or they escape. Restrained is a higher penalty than grabbed, I guess. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to use, I, regardless, I'm going to use uh, my new uh, the uh, lemon laud of feet away. Uh, and I haven't gotten to use my dazing blow yet, so I'm going to use that. Uh, requirements so you have a creature grabbed, uh, and he's restrained though. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, this it does have the press. This has the press trait, but this is my second attack. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make a melee strike against him. Okay. The weapon damage from the stri- this strike is bludgeoning damage. It's the hammer. If the strike hits, the creature must attempt a fortitude save against your class DC, and this is an inca- incapacitation effect. Basically, I'm going to try to stun him. In nice. Oh, okay. So he's already restrained, and then you just, boom, like hit him with right the temple. Yep. Okay. So, uh, and then here's, so I've got him I've got him in a headlock, and I'm just going to basically like pummel him his head with a hammer. Because uh, <laughs> Ethel is a bruiser. Cracked eye. What a badass. You came onto this boat, took a million hits, <laughs> yeah. and like killed three guys and knocked one out. <laughs> Pushed another one in the water. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I think this is gonna, this might be a critical. Uh, this is gonna be 30, a 33 to hit. Uh, yes, that is, that a, crit. is a critical. <laughs> that is okay. a crit. So we'll do the damage in a minute, uh, but the, the dazing blow with the critical, uh, you are stunned, oh you have to, you have to get saved. You have a, a fortitude save. Fortitude save, uh, eleven. That fails. You are stunned three. Oh, wow. oh my god! Wow. Loses his whole round. Yeah, stunned yeah. Stunned three. So stunned f- for th- three rounds. Is that no? It just loses oh, three all actions, three yeah. actions. Yeah. How many and rounds is it? I get a critical hit. Joe. Oh my god. Well, no. Uh, I think you just double the damage unless you roll a natural twenty. Think, There's no right? damage. Oh, okay. right? Just double damage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a glancing blow. So he takes oh, damage, uh, and then you roll against this incapacitation. Yeah, yeah, but it's not a natural yep. 20, so you don't pull a fan. Great, great. Okay, uh, so that will be... 26 points of damage. Okay, so he is wow. in... Uh, he's Holy completely smokes. on. He's, well, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't he's grab him and then beat his head in with a hammer. And yeah. he's still yeah. restrained as well. Yeah, yeah, he's still restrained. So he's oh, restrained, stunned three, and uh, on his last legs. Uh, hell of a round uh, for Ethel, and now it's Aldo's turn. Only a couple of these guys left. One is on your boat. That's true. Uh, okay. Troy, what is your favorite Monty Python routine? <laughs> uh, I like the Spanish Inquisition. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, I'm expected. going to. <laughs> uh, I'm going to throw a. I'm going to just drop a bomb, a firebomb, right to the guy standing right underneath me. Awesome. Right, right in his head. 
Uh, oh my gosh, uh, that is a 34 to hit. Uh, that is a critical. Uh, that is that a is. critical. Amazing. Makes sense, it was That's right there. damage. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Just dropped uh, a tube. Ah! <laughs> uh, that is 28 points of damage. Oh. Okay. Boy. I'll drop a second one. That was so successful. Uh, 21. <laughs> this poor guy is stupefied, this by the way. This is so funny. Uh, like, 21 is a hit. <laughs> Where did that uh, come oh, from? Oh, wow. Uh, 17 more points of damage. Jeepers. <laughs> and uh, yeah, one more time. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Uh, 21. Oh. Another hit. Natural oh 14. Uh, oh my god. Uh, that's a 16 more points of damage. And he had 15 hit points left. Yes! yes. Oh, oh, boom, boom, boom. 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 You should. <laughs> Where it rolled a natural one that, like, Eris didn't even see him there, but then, like, three bombs go off, and she's like, oh. <laughs> drops dead. She's like, oh, okay. Poor guy didn't awesome. even know what was happening as he was burnt alive. <laughs> Dropping bombs like Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eris, it is your turn. There is a flaming Brigadier corpse General five Jim feet Brewster. away. Yeah. <laughs> a flaming corpse, you say? Flame, yeah, right up your alley. You want to um, steal it for parts? <laughs> so, is there anything on the other side of the boat that you would say can uh, make bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage? Oh sure, there's some uh, there's a harpoon laying on the ground. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who left this on I the wasn't deck? expecting something that <laughs> cool. Secure that harpoon! So <laughs> Eris reaches out her chicken arms and the harpoon. Where's the harpoon? Uh it's it's right near Pepsi. <laughs> Pepsi? Pepsi's coiled oh, around it, just waiting, just waiting for someone to, way to fly. <laughs> Come on. <It's> harpoon. <laughs> Pepsi Start loves the harpoon, to fly. And <laughs> you see the harpoon just start to sprout chicken legs. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And it's got 25 feet of motion, so it walks up to behind this bl blue targeted John this guy. guy. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> um, and would you say that this harpoon makes what type of damage? Um, I'm gonna say piercing. Piercing? It's a bludgeoning um, harpoon. It's a bludgeoning harpoon. It's a classic harpoon hammer. <laughs> it attacks that target. I, since I'm using two spells. This is the chicken cast. poon? Yeah, the chicken poon. <laughs> chicken poon. Or maybe uh, a harpoon. Wait, is this, is this heightened chicken poon? <laughs> heightened chicken poon. So it's heightening this my, chicken poon? It's one of my focus <laughs> hand trips that I've never used. Um, and it's spirit object. If I just use one spell slot to cast it, the thing just has legs and can move. Um, but I'm using two two uh, turns to cast it. Um, Actions. The object attacks one creature of my choice adjacent to its new space. So I need to make a melee, a melee attack against that creature. Okay. Awesome. Um, All right. So what is this away? called? Spirit object. Spirit uh, object. Focus cantrip. Nice. Cool. Um, All right, what do you think the attack bonus for this? Does it take your attack bonus or is it your your wisdom bonus? I don't know. Um, a melee attack, a melee spell attack roll. Okay, so it's your spell attack. Uh, okay, so I rolled a 12 and I have a plus 16 right now to my spell. So All right, that's so that's a 28 and that's a hit. 28. That's a hit, awesome. So that's 4d4 plus my spell casting ability, which is a Yo. four. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So that's three, four, one. Uh, so 10 plus four, 14 points of damage from this harpoon. <laughs> from this <Nine>. chicken poon. <laughs> chicken poon. <laughs> chicken poon. <laughs> um, I'm picking. Go ahead, what? Oh. The harp picking okay. and the chicken poon. And. Uh, okay. What else you I've got? got one what more. What the weird stuff you got in your bag of tricks? <laughs> <laughs> I've got one more action I can do. Um, the guy next to me is dead, which is great, so I don't have to deal with him. Um, so can I make, I guess, maybe a knowledge check against the guy with the captain's hat on? Sure, yeah. Trying to recall it, knowledge and the quick glimpse you got of this fella. A cult? Would that be nice? Yeah, or, you could do a cult, sure. Yes, my best one. 
Ooh, natural 18 plus 18, mm. which is a 30. Six questions? Yes. I'm yes. today. I'm not you can remember in the Mana Waste digging into some occult books about denizens of Lang, which is what that captain is. Um, in terms of a specific weakness, if you wanted to go that way again, uh, they aren't really uh, weak to anything in particular. Um, but at 36, I can give you something else. I'm just going to say uh, that they... Oh, what is actually going to be helpful to you? I mean, they cast spells. They uh, they don't breathe. They don't so don't breathe. cast anything against them that's going to affect their breath. Okay. That's really all Got I can it. give you that's going to help. They're nasty creatures. And maybe in uh, your travels with this crew, uh, as they've been regaling you with tales of their journey thus far, Atticus and Aldo told you of the denizen of Lang. They fought uh, beneath Iris Hill. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. We should I role play I find this everything. out, I try to relay it to the people around me um, as best as I can in combat. Right. As the chicken poon continues to stab away. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does the chicken poon like lose the legs and become an inert harpoon once again at the end of so, the spell? That's what I've been trying to figure out. Um, it's not like a spell that is sustained. Yeah, I think um, it probably just goes think. <laughs> that's what I would again. imagine. And the guy that just... gets hit by it goes, what the? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Was that? Chicken legs, like, Did you see that? Look at around. <laughs> I swear it had chicken legs. <laughs> well, like the Wicked Witch, like the legs underneath the harpoon just slowly disappear back underneath yeah. the harpoon. Back the harpoon. <laughs> uh. That harpoon's alive! So that harpoon just that's fucking what stabs happens. me. That's what makes sense to me. Otherwise, it would seem really overpowered, but it's not clear. <laughs> Flashback to that man as a young child sitting with his grandmother. Hey, don't put your harpoons away. It'll sprout <laughs> the chicken legs and stab you. <laughs> oh, Grandma, stop drinking Amaretto. Uh, it is Bounty Hunter 1's turn, and he is restrained, stupefied, 14. He can't do anything. Uh, you guys have this battle in hand here. Can you finish it out? It is Pepsi's turn. Okay, so Pepsi <laughs> acts on... <and> chicken. <laughs> Pepsi acts on my Pepsi. turn. So because of the initiative, can we say that... I delayed, and now it's my turn, and now Pepsi's going. Well, delay is an action. Yeah, no, it's not. It's a free act. Oh, it's a free action. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay, what so I was going to say. Readying, yeah, is, uh, readying an action is an I'm action. Sorry. All right. So you want to go before Pepsi? It, yeah, so that Pepsi can take its turn, and now it's Pepsi's turn. I'm just ah. making the initiative make sense. Um, <laughs> okay. So now Pepsi is going to. Wait, 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 wait. No. What? If you what? delay, you have to go. You have to have your whole turn. Then oh, it can be then... Pepsi's turn. Because okay. you have so to spend then, an action to command Pepsi. Right. I'm saying my first action would be to command Pepsi. Yep. And then it doesn't go during oh, your turn. You have oh, to complete your turn. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Turn. Got you, got you. All right. So then, Troy. Yes. Can I stealthily... I'm still hidden. Is there a way to you stealthily are. jump onto the boat is my question. Hmm. There's a lot of commotion going on. The nearest combatant uh, is stupefied, and the other one just got stabbed by a chicken poon. Uh, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say you're you're hidden to them. If you want to uh, jump now, here's the thing. I the think you're gonna have of to... the chicken poon. Is it? It also <laughs> created a bit of a distraction. Yeah, it's one of the most distracting things. It's one of the most distracting happen. things this crew has ever seen. <laughs> now wait, you are on top of the the thing here. The only problem is you're gonna have to. What's your movement speed? 30. Oh, 30? Actually, yeah, you can make that jump, I'm gonna say. Five, 10, 15. Because it's closer than it, it appears. It's five feet closer. So yeah, if you've got a speed of 30, 15. you can jump 15, which gives you enough. You're oh. up top too, right? So yeah. It's a jump down, a so it's a little easier. Why do you keep jumping onto the water though? I keep <laughs> moving you back and you keep jumping onto the water. So trying to help. My question is, <laughs> can I jump here or would this combatant, sorry, can I jump to the left of Ethel between the fray or does that, I mean, they would notice me, I, I would presume. I think they would notice you. I also think that's a longer jump. Okay, so then I will jump. Yeah, that's 25 right, feet. To the right of Ethel. That's good, to yep. stay hidden away from the combatants. So that's my action, my move action. I huh, 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 jump leap. off the boat, leap hidden, do a tuck and roll. Nobody and sees I, you. There's a lot going on on the other side of the boat. <laughs> so yeah, lands like crouching, almost cat-like, like behind Ethel. Obscured um, by the sail, perhaps. Yes. Oh yeah, maybe yes, the flapping sail. 
And then she is going to cast Guidance on Ethel as oh, thanks. another action. Uh, so you get a plus one. And then Sweet. her third action is commanding Pepsi. So now it is Pepsi's turn. Okay, great. Now what does old Pepsi do? Now Pepsi, I think, gets two actions, right? Yes, uh, Pepsi gets yeah. two, two actions. Um, cool. So Pepsi is going to bite at the combatant who is... The slowed. S- slowed. The slowed combatant. The slowed falconer. And let's see. Net 20. Oh, <laughs> my Pepsi. God. Pepsi. <laughs> With a Pepsi. plus 13. Pepsi. Pepsi. Right. 23. Uh, Pepsi is unfortunately a named character, uh, so that will be a critical. <laughs> Yes, Pepsi, Pepsi is unfortunately <laughs> named. Pepsi power. <laughs> Pepsi power. Uh, okay, this one from Greg K in Chicago, Illinois. Not today. Phrasma, the Lady of Graves, has determined that this is not your day to die. Deal double damage and become affected as though by the blessed spell. You can oh. dismiss the spell on your turn to cast heal, oh. even if it is not normally available to you. The number of actions to cast heal are the same as the base spell. Uh, bless, you, uh, and this is the rule for bless, you gain a plus one status bonus to attack rolls. Bless can counteract bane. So, Whoa. yeah, double damage, and you're under the effects of bless, and you can dismiss it to heal Ethel. Yes, this is amazing. <laughs> I just rolled max damage, so my D8 uh, is an eight plus my three. So do I double it or do I roll you, again? It's 22. Double it. Okay, yeah. so 22 points of damage to the slowed guy. Okay. And then remind me, heal is how many actions? Because I would like to just do it for Ethel. Uh, it's you have to. You only have two actions, and it's the one action version. He would already have to be in melee with you. So the, yeah, the, copy. Yeah. Uh, so he'll so, have to wait a turn. A one action okay. heal is range of touch, and then two. Yeah. Is two actions is range thirty feet, three and then burst. three actions is an emanation. Gotcha. Okay. So then uh, attack again. What, yeah, I, I will attack again. Why not? Let's see. With a Yo. with the benefits of bless, with plus one bonus. With a plus one, yeah. So. Yeah, this is cool. It's animal companions. It's always a lot of work. Like I don't like playing with animal companions, but in Tui, it's really fun because now, yeah, you have to use an action, but you're netting four actions. Yeah, um, it's kind of right it's kind of dope. Yeah. Uh, Twenty-eight to hit. That is a hit as well. And, and you took the multiple attack penalty. Yes. Oh wait. Well, it no. still probably hits if you it actually still roll hits. A twenty-eight. Yeah, it's not a 28. Yeah. It's a 14 plus 8. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, minimum damage. That's four points of damage. That is enough to kill that poor oh, yeah. 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 Extra attack was everything. Yes. Pepsi's a stone cold killer. Yeah, Suki's just whispering. <laughs> like just talking to Pepsi. Yeah, hidden. parcel tongue. Parcel tongue. Uh, there is only really one uh, combatant left that can do anything. Um, and based on where everybody is, it's rough. So in classic Lavalley fashion, uh, it will hunt Pepsi, move up, and try to uh, chop its tail off as it uh, draws its falchion. Actually, I don't, I don't think I can do all of those because it has the crossbow out. So I will not hunt. I will just draw the falchion and attack you. And try. He's going to try and like chop Pepsi in half like you okay. would if yeah. you were in the jungle. Go oh, with a falchion! Cut the snake's head off at the head. Natural 20. Not oh, even. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> blow for blow. Oh my gosh. How many hit points does this thing have? And what is this? Is a snake gonna wake up with a madness? <laughs> <laughs> He's like yo, a chain smoker? Yo, that snake is bad, yo. <laughs> my poor Pepsi is gonna be depressed. He's gonna be doomed and be like, I don't want it today. <laughs> Holy I'm not hungry. Shit, natural 20. Or it's I got can't night believe. terrors. I don't wanna have a snake that has night terrors. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> snakes! Snakes everywhere! <laughs> snakes freaking out! Oh, man. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, let me just see what the bonus demoni is here. Uh, where is Okay. Dude, that was with the Falchione, too. That is brutes. All right, not terrible. 18 points of damage. Could have been okay, a that's lot worse. Not that bad, actually. Okay. <laughs> that's his yeah, action. You, you do get Pepsi good. You get him on the tail. He kind of almost gets away, but you shear off some of his tail. Shear off a little bit of Pepsi. Uh, Atticus, finish out the round, buddy. Uh, Atticus is going to reach out and bring that... Harpoon to life once again. <laughs> <laughs> and it just it starts shaking. 
and it rises up off the deck and just slunks into the guy that is uh, that just attacked <laughs> the uh, one remaining like valid enemy. Yeah, the one remaining valid uh, target. Uh, oh, that is a thirty-one to hit. Oh That's my god! A crit. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I wasn't prepared for a critical. I, I didn't. I didn't expect. Uh, okay. Wait, is the harpoon name? I guess he is. He's chicken food. Chicken food. <laughs> chicken food. Chicken food. Chicken food. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so is your name. Uh, oh my god, I rolled amazing damage, of course. Uh, it's 30 points of damage. Oh and my god. And that kills the dude <laughs> on the <laughs> shot. Out through the yeah, front of his Zanikin. chest. <laughs> the the one harpoon. remaining combatant is uh, restrained and uh, stupefied. So, Eris, uh, please uh, cinematically describe the end of this poor man's life. I mean, cinematically. I keep saying Eris, I meant the, it. The, oh, me? <laughs> Uh, uh, Kate, would you please step off the stage? Kate, please step <laughs> off. The, Matthew, I was going to use the chicken poon. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to use the chicken poon. You could team up and use the chicken poon. Right. Can you so let her use the honored. chicken poon to finish out the episode? I would be honored if you used the Remember, <laughs> the poon is currently stuck in the dude. That's true. <laughs> it uh, releases but, itself from the dude, walks so over, oh, stomp, stomp with his chicken <laughs> legs <laughs> behind the stupefied, grappled dude, and just like pecks itself like it has a beak into the back of the guy while you're holding it, Ethel. <laughs> Ethel is like, Stop. Ethel with his thousand eyes is like, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, a lot of weird stuff, but this is weird. Yeah, I, I love Ethel just being like, just don't move and it can't see you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remain still. Uh, I never pictured the sharp end of the harpoon being a beak. Yeah. <laughs> beak goes into the the, uh, what is that vein in your leg that can kill you if you get it cut? The uh, femoral, femoral artery. artery. Femoral, femoral artery. artery. Just oh. hits it perfectly and he, he bleeds out and <laughs> dies. <laughs> and his yeah. blood commingles with the blood coming down from the sails, which continue to flap as two figures emerge. Folks, oh. happy new year. We'll see you next week. Oh, see you next oh week. my God. We're back, baby. We're back, baby. Good night, everybody. Chicken Chicken yeah, this guy's look like human guys, but you're not a man, you're a chicken poo. <laughs> <laughs>